All right, so it says evaluate gravitational potential energy between two five kilogram masses. So let me listen. Spherical steel ball, and this is spherical is actually important. In gravity, there's a, um, there's a theorem that can be proven, which we don't do, that in terms of a lot of formulas, energy, force, whatever, that um, for spherical symmetric things, you can treat as if all the mass is at the center of the sphere, and the results will be exactly correct. This is not true of every single geometric shape. It's only true of a spherical symmetric mass distribution. So spherical, there is important. <laughs> Separated by, uh, and when you measure the distance, that's why this is center to center matters. So this distance is what we would call D. So, all right, so the gravitational potential energy, we drive that expression I, did, I drived it somewhere, I forget. I think I drived it the last uh, uh, virtual class session. So the gravitational potential energy in the context of the Newton's law of universal gravitation is minus G times the product of masses divided by distance, not square, just the distance. <laughs> That's what you get after. Um, yeah, I hope this minus is expected. <laughs> All right, so let me, um, I, I guess it's a matter of just plugging in the numbers. Let me plug in the numbers in O from alpha because I don't have a constant G here. So it'll be kind of um, nice to just to do everything in one shot. I mean, you know, you should know how to work out the units because you don't have O from alpha at the exam. But for the purpose of homework, this is perfectly fine and it also avoids some of the annoying things about Minus, uh, and G, I should probably spell it out, gravitational constant times uh, the mass, which would be five kilograms squared divided by the distance. And I can actually write down 15.2 centimeter because all from alpha is unit aware. It'll actually do the unit conversion itself and give me what I uh, need. Um, yeah, so the gravitational constant, um, which you could look up on your own. Um, and so make sure it interpreted your answer correctly. Then you get all these different results. Uh, here it is, 10 to the power of minus three joules. Uh, so minus 1.098. Um, gravitational potential right between them. And it is a negative answer in that the, um, the reference point for Newton's law of universal gravitation is when they are infinitely far apart. And at that point, it has zero potential energy. And as they come closer in, it becomes more negative because now you have less potential energy when they're closer together. So submit. <laughs> it's correct. Let me um, show you, let me first uh, uh, set up part B and do it the way that I know to be correct. So, um, so yeah, uh, let me write down an expression here. So the expression here should be minus G times M squared over D. And this is what I might call my initial potential energy. And for part B, now what I need to do is, all right, they are initially at rest relative to each other. So uh, what that means is the initial velocity is zero. Um, in deep space, it just means I can ignore everything else. It says, it says to use conservation of energy to find out how fast they'll be traveling. So it's a, I mean, it tells you to. So it's a conservation a uh, conservation law strategy question. So what you need to do is write down the conservation equation for the conserved quantity. Here it's energy. So conservation of energy equation. And I like to do this every time I do this so that I don't forget anything. The initial potential energy plus the initial kinetic energy is equal to the final potential energy plus the final kinetic energy. 
Now, I'll cross out the things that I know to be zero easily. The initial kinetic energy is zero. That's the whole thing about there being rests, uh, relative rest to each other. Now, all the other quantities are not uh, zero uh, because the, the reference point we are using is when they're infinitely far apart. In this final, um, final potential energy won't be zero because well, they're not infinitely far apart. In fact, you have to kind of uh, figure out the geometry. So what I see is uh, it has, each sphere has a radius of 4.8 centimeters. Let me call that R. So a figure is really helpful here. If you draw the figure of the two spheres in contact with each other, then you can see what the center to center distance is. So from center to here, that's R. From center to here, that's another R. So you see that this uh, center to center distance is 2R. So that's the distance that we are going to use for this final potential energy. Um, so uh, let's start writing this down. Um, so the initial potential energy is minus G m squared over d, and there's a numerical value for that and everything, that's equal to the final potential energy. The numerator doesn't change, minus g m squared, but the denominator changes. Instead of d, now it's 2r. That's the separation between them. So it should have gotten more negative because 2r is smaller than d. Plus the kinetic energy, and this is where you have to be careful. With the final kinetic energy, these two balls here, they are both moving. So you have to think about the kinetic energy of one ball um, moving at free final and kinetic energy of the other ball also moving at free final. So what it is is, uh, let me just write it out. One half, I'm given there, uh, yeah, begin. Uh, one half m free final squared plus another one half m free final squared. If I were doing momentum, they would cancel out, but it's energy, it's scalar, they don't cancel out, they just add it together. So, so all right, let's, uh, um, let's uh, solve for V final. It looks like some of the quantities cancel. Uh, one factor of M cancels from every single term. Good. Um, let me move this term over to the other side. When you do that, what you get is, um, Let's see, uh, gm times plus one over two r minus one over d is equal to, and I'm going to add these two together to get just the v final squared. One half, one half plus one half is one. So v final should be just the square root of this quantity here. That's v final. Okay, um, let's, I'm just gonna use all from alpha to do all these calculations. So it's uh, square root of gravitational constant times five kilogram. We are no longer squaring it. Times um, one over two R. Uh, I'll just do the calculation in my head. So it's uh, 9.6 centimeter uh, minus one over D, which was, uh, which is 15.2 centimeter, 15.2 um, centimeter. All right, make sure that all from alpha understood it correctly, square root of G times M times this uh, length, the parameter thing. And I get 3.58 times 10 to minus five meter per second. Okay, so that seems reasonable. Let's uh, uh, plug it in and say 3.58. All right, good. So yeah, so this, uh, um, so you know, this uh, question demonstrates just the cumulative nature of physics. Um, you learned energy conservation near the beginning of uh, exam two and it's not something you can forget for your um, exams three and the final exam.